okay let's look into the architecture topic and try to get some understanding here I'm going to discuss on SAP P4 HANA architecture, SAP Datasphere and SAP PW Bridge. Let's get into the topic. So, uh, firstly, BW4 HANA architecture. This is BW4 HANA system was a successor to SAP BW on HANA. BW4 HANA works on HANA database only. Here, SAP completely removed the traditional BW objects like DS Force, uh, multi provider. Info set and replaced with HANA based objects like ADS for composite provider. Here, SAP simplified the connectivity to SAP BW4 HANA by replacing the old connections with the old non SAP connections with HANA source system connection and the SAP connections with the ODP based connection and also introduced a new connection called Big Data Connection. Okay, so this part I want to cover with respect to B4 HANA architecture with respect to connectivity point of view. And moving to the data sphere. So, what is data sphere? SAP data sphere is a successor to BW4 HANA. But what the major difference between here is a data sphere is completely cloud based product. And it was SAS product, means software as a service. And the next major difference here is SAP data sphere, you won't find any ADS for info object composite provider concepts. All the base data here resides in remote tables or staging tables. On top of these tables, we build our data flows in the business builder, uh, data builder and um, analytical views and all. So if we see this data sphere from SAP BW resource point of view, who is having years of experience, then it's completely a new product without any our traditional SAP BW footprint. So many people got confused here. What happens to SAP BW if SAP moving towards data sphere after B4 HANA? Because SAP is also promoting data sphere a lot um, because it was completely cloud based solution and having many options to connect uh, different uh, sources to this and the connector uh, contains a lot of features which compete with the other technologies. Here SAP also providing different source system connection options uh, both from cloud and on premise. Uh, on premise. So from cloud here we can see uh, at this point of time SAP is having 10 SAP connections, now around 14 non SAP cloud based connections and uh, two partner tools. When coming to on premise section, uh, we have these are the uh, on premise source system connections uh, which is SAP providing within the data sphere. Overall, what was the point? What was the point I project here is SAP data sphere is a cloud based product and uh, successor to BW4 HANA. Here also we can implement ETL data flows just like our BW. SAP provided many different type of source connections including SAP, non-SAP, cloud and on-premise sources. And in this data sphere, we don't see any of our BW objects like uh, info objects, ADS or composite provider. Now the next important point is how SAP BW concepts fit in this architecture. How years of experience we gain in BW got useful in this architecture. This is we are going to discuss in the next slide. <coughs> As said in my first video, SAP BW Bridge Bring enables you to use SAP BW functionality in the public cloud. It provides SAP BW capability directly in the data sphere. How to have this BW Bridge? Firstly, we need SAP Data Sphere subscription. Then we configure BW Bridge Tenant in SAP Data Sphere. In this process, it creates a BW Bridge space in the Data Sphere. Once the BW Bridge space is created, it can be found in the Space Management. You can search for the name, what name you are providing at the time of creating BW Bridge Tenant. Accordingly, you can find your BW Bridge space here. So once you enter, once you uh, selected this PW bridge space, then uh, go to the data integration monitor. If you go to this data integration monitor under your BW bridge space, you, here you can find a link called Open SAP BW bridge cockpit. When you click on this link, then it opens BW bridge um, cockpit. Okay. So <clears throat> what is BW bridge cockpit? It is a central entry point for administ for the administration of SAP BW bridge system. It's a web-based interface and contains number of SAP Fiori tiles. All these uh, uh, tiles, what you see, all these are Fiori, Fiori type apps, we can say. 
and that can be used for process control monitor administration in SAP BW Bridge. More details about this BW Bridge cockpit can be discussed in the further sessions. The outcome of this slide is BW Bridge is like a component in SAP Data Sphere. We configure the BW Bridge tenant in SAP Data Sphere. After that, we can see one dedicated space in Data Sphere for this BW Bridge. Now, let's see what we can do uh, with this BW Bridge and how it is useful. Coming to the SAP Data Sphere. So and SAP BW Bridge. So within this SAP BW Bridge, we can perform modeling. Okay, we can perform modeling in SAP BW Bridge using the Eclipse based modeling tool. We can model SAP BW objects like info objects, ADS flows, composite providers, transformations, data flows. So for SAP BW resource, these are all very familiar and and the environment is also just like our BW4 HANA. So using this BW bridge and uh, using the Eclipse based modeling tool. Now our BW concepts are coming uh, live here. We can do our BW modeling. So um, using the Eclipse tool, we can perform the modeling part only. The entire administration of BW bridge happens from the BW bridge cockpit. The cloud connector, you know, so when we do modeling, so before coming to that cloud connector, so to perform modeling means we need source data. So from where we will get the source data. So here if you see in the Eclipse tool, when we configure the BW, um, BW project here, we can see data source section. In the data source section, we can create source system connections from the on-premise systems. So what are those? Either it can be SAP BW, B4 HANA, ERP or S4 HANA. We can connect the, we can create connections using the, um, uh, yeah, we have something, uh, we, but we can create a source system connections. So now the cloud connector serves as a link between the on-premise uh, source systems and your SAP BW bridge, okay, which is technically based on an ABAP platform in SAP BTP. RFC is used as a protocol for data exchange between on-premise source systems and the SAP BW bridge. So for this, from the on-premise source systems using cloud connector, I can bring data from on-premise to our BW bridge. So when data comes and stores in BW bridge, nothing but it is storing in the cloud environment. And the data, whatever storing in the cloud is storing under the BW bridge. So BW bridge is a space in the data sphere. So whatever data we are storing in BW bridge space can be consumed in SAP data sphere by doing a sharing. So we need to share the objects from BW bridge to other spaces to consume in the further modeling. Okay. So, so while creating these source system connections from the on-premise source system, so we need to create some communication arrangement mechanism in from the BW bridge cockpit. So we need to create a communication user, communication system and communication arrangement uh, in order to uh, establish a successful connection between the on-premise source, source systems to your uh, BW bridge. We, when we create an ADS4 or info objects, whatever BW objects we are creating in BW bridge, all those can be exposed as tables in the BW bridge space. So those tables can be shared with other spaces and then consume them in the um, further ETL modeling. So these uh, SAP systems can be means uh, using this on-premise connection, we can bring data uh, to SAP data sphere and for other all non-SAP source systems and all, anyway SAP data sphere itself is giving a number of connection mechanisms to bring data to the data sphere. About the data sources section in the BW project, as I said, like we can create a source system connections here. So we, when we uh, talk in detail about the source system connections, supported source system connections, so SAP BW bridge enables a web based data extraction based on SAP Network ODP. So using ODP framework, we can create a different type of source system connections here. The first one is ODP SAP. Here, ABAP extractors available in SAP ECC and S4 HANA on-premise. So using this connection, we can extract data from SHAM data sources and custom data sources, which are available in SAP ECC and S4 on-premise. 
and the next one is uh, ODP BW. So using this, what we can do, um, why we create this connection mainly is uh, if we have, if the client is already having a BW system, uh, existing BW system, and he is migrating to BW Bridge. So in that scenario, so all the data flows which are available in the existing BW system can be migrated to the BW Bridge. Instead of doing again a greenfield project, uh, simply we can migrate the data flows also. So using this connection and using the migration tools, uh, we can migrate the data flows and. Uh, one type of shell using shell conversion we can migrate the data flows only and using remote connection we can migrate the data flow and also the data also okay which we can discuss in later point and the next one is ODP CDS so using this ODP ABAP based CDS connection uh, we can uh, uh, extract uh, you know, use the data sources that are created under S4 HANA system Next one is ODP SLT. So using uh, this ODP SLT connection, we can replicate data from SAP ERP system and native HANA databases like um, SAP HANA, AAC, Oracle, and all. The last one is write interface. We can directly push data into ADS for info object uh, based on using this write interface mechanism. Uh, so by this, uh, I am conclu concluding my uh, architecture video. So I hope you got some understanding about this uh, BW Bridge architecture, how how and uh, where we can see this uh, BW Bridge, how it is was configured, and how we can uh, load data into this uh, BW Bridge, how BW uh, models can be seen, and all. I think we got some clarity on high level. So the more details will be explained on the further topics uh, with the technical uh, functionality and all. Thank you.